Good morning and a happy Saturday. How are you, my friends? Uh, I hope you're doing amazing. And I just wanted to take some time to share with you what's happened, what insight I had that was amazing for me this morning. And I wanted to share it with you because I think that it could be very interesting for you to, if you're experiencing the same thing as I was yesterday and the past few days, to actually uh, know of my experience because it could inspire you, it could uplift you. <laughs> and I'm also recording it for myself because I know that at some point, not so long, not well, it's going to come up again. And I really want to record that memorable incident so that next time it happens, it doesn't come as a surprise. It's, I, and I know that it's part of my journey, but first of all, have a look at my little companion next to her house. <laughs> and so here's what happened. For the past few days, my weight has been going up and I didn't understand. I really didn't understand. That's, I love understanding. I want to make sense of everything that's happening out there in the world. And it's hard for me <laughs> to reconcile with the idea that, that sometimes we don't understand. And uh, that's what I love so much about coaching, because we understand why we behave a certain way. We understand why we feel a certain way. That's super precious for me. That's really important. But for the past few days, my weight from 61.1 kilos was going up. 61.2, 61.3, 61.5, 61.8. And I was just, what's happening? For the first time in my grown-up life, I am actually able to stick to a food plan. If you don't know my story, for 30 years, between the age of 16 to 46, I was unable to follow any plan whatsoever as far as food was concerned, because I was a binge And if you're not familiar with binge eating, here is what it looks looks like. Um, when it was, Whenever I was feeling triggered, because I had a particular event in my life or an interaction with my partner or, um, I don't know, any, anything that felt, and then I felt a big emotion. I didn't know what to do with that emotion. And the only thing that gave me some form of relief, or the closest thing that looked like relief was eating food. And I would eat a lot of food in a very short amount of time. That was what... Uh, my pattern was, and I would do that at least, yeah, at least five, six times a week, so nearly every day. And when I was not, it was because I was forcing myself, pushing myself, resisting the urge to actually do that. So it wasn't either, it wasn't all a, a good place to be either. But now, because I've learned about coaching, and I've also become a coach myself, I know how to do that. I know how to actually feel my emotion, understand where they're coming from, and not react to my emotions, not actually eat huge quantities, right, to cope with whatever I'm feeling, to cope with whatever I'm experiencing. So I'm super proud of myself for having achieved that. And I help my clients do the same, you know, stick to the plan that they've chosen if they want to. And since joining the Rebellion Body program, I was super proud of myself because I've been able to follow it, except, of course, on Christmas evening and New Year's Day. And it's short on the scale, but it made perfect sense, right? Since the beginning of January, which was 13 days ago, I've decided with my coach to really stick to the plan and to follow it. So in my mind, what was expected is, of course, that yeah, okay, from time to time, my weight would be stable and then it would decrease. So that's the way it would look like, like maybe staircase, you know, but going down, obviously. And I didn't understand, and I still don't, and that's fine. I didn't understand why this past week my weight was going up. Right, so yesterday I was really feeling discouraged. And this morning and yesterday too, I took some notes about what was happening for me. And really, basically, I was feeling desperate because I was thinking, well, whatever I'm doing is obviously not working. So whatever I'm doing, I'm doing it in vain, right? And it's like, I don't know if you're familiar with the image of Sisyphus. Is it Sisyphus? In French, it's Sisyphus. And it's this character from the mythology, from the Greek and Roman mythology, who keeps pushing a ball, uh, not a ball, a boulder, <laughs> up a hill. And then it ha he has to do it again because the 
And that's what I was feeling and that's what I hate feeling because for all these years, for three dec decades, this is what I've been experiencing with binge eating until I find coaching, right? Doing the same thing over and over again, but in vain. Trying to make progress again and again, but in vain, right? So I hate being in that place. And that's what it felt like last week. So that was the main thought I was having in my head. I'm doing all this for nothing. The strength training, the 10,000 steps per day, which also I enjoy so much. The sticking to my diet, which makes me feel so good. I was thinking, okay, I'm doing all this for nothing. I better quit. So what was, what did I do from that place of despair? Because I was thinking I'm doing all this for nothing. Well, I was, of course, finding evidence. Look at the scale, not moving the right way. <laughs> I was also distracting myself, sitting in front of the TV, eating chocolate. Yes, it's that same coping mechanism again. And I was not coaching myself. I was not challenging that thought, you know, that story that yeah, I'm doing all this for nothing. Even though I've got so much evidence that, yes, I'm doing it for the best in me and for so much. It, I feel so good. But I was discarding that. No. Nope. And I was sticking to that little, that, that story that I've got about myself. You know, some people think of themselves as unicorns and uh, that's serving them. There's this special person that can manage to do something in spite of their worst condition. That's the story my coach, my business coach has, Sarah Plowman. In spite of all the conditions, COVID, being a single mom, uh, she managed to create a thriving business. Amazing. She's got the unicorn story. My story, the story I always go back to, is the ugly duckling story. Meaning I've got everything I need, I'm doing everything right, and in spite of this, everything's going wrong. So I, I was sticking to that story when I fe was feeling desperate yesterday evening because I was believing, whatever, it's not working anyway. And I was forgetting my goal and why my goal of being stronger than ever on the 21st of May, 2024, when I turned 50, why those reasons were irresistible, why wanting to be stronger than ever was such a good motivation for me, right? And I was forgetting that I can create anything I want to, right? And of course, when I was in that loop yesterday evening, I was annihilating, you know, um, erasing, deleting everything I had built so far and everything I wanted to build. Amazing. So having that first step of being aware was really important for me to see. Okay, this is the impact that choosing this belief that I'm doing all this for nothing is having in my life. And of course, I don't want that. I don't want to discard and to erase and to destroy everything I've built so far and everything I want to build. No, that's not what I want. So the first step that I very often need when I notice my thought, my feeling, my actions and the result I'm creating with those is to be self-compassionate with myself. And it goes like this. Yesterday, here's what I wrote. Of course, I'm feeling desperate because I really believe that what I'm doing is to no avail, is in vain totally normal and I don't have to feel desperate and I don't have to tell myself that what I'm doing is for nothing. This belief is just one option. Of this is what I told myself and then I challenged the thought. My thought was I'm doing all this for nothing. So as always what I want to be is where I am right now. I always use the analogy of the race with my clients. We want to be in that place where, yeah, everything's fine. Everything's fantastic. But right now, we're not at the end of the race. We're not on the finish line without the starting point. <laughs> and my starting point yesterday was being desperate because I truly believed that all I was doing was for nothing. So the question I asked myself was, okay, why is what I'm doing worth nothing at all? And the only reason I could keep come up with was because I'm not seeing the number <laughs> going down on the scale. That's it. That's the only reason I could come up with, which in and of itself was really a good thing. And then the second question I asked, my, I asked myself was, why is what I'm doing actually worth something? And, and here are the, all the reasons I came up with, because I'm already seeing results. Okay, they're my results, my way, my perception, instead of something concrete, 
a factual that everybody would agree on. Yes, this is the number today. Yes, this was the number yesterday. No, okay, that I don't have. But what I do have is that I feel better and better <laughs> than ever in my body. I haven't slept that well for years, literally. I think it was five or six years when I, five or six years ago when I started uh, having insomnia and I would stay up for one, two hours very often, nearly every single night. But since I started the Rebellion Body Program and working out, focusing on my diet, on my food plan full of protein and walking more and more every day, I've been sleeping like a baby. That's amazing. I, I'm so thrilled. That could be enough. So that also could be more than enough. That's amazing what I've done, what I've achieved, right? In only one month's time, by the way, because I started the Rebellion Body Program on the 11th of December. We're now the 13th of January. In, in one month, I've accomplished this. <laughs> that could be thrilling, couldn't it? Also, I'm noticing that my stomach feels flatter, stronger, right? My butt <laughs> seems to be smaller too. And maybe I'm wrong about that, but I like what I'm seeing. That's the main point, right? I like what I'm seeing in the mirror. I like very much how I feel, right? And I'm more confident than ever that I can do this, right? That I can reach this goal for my 50th birthday and beyond and be stronger than ever. So that was my answer to my second question, challenging this thought that, okay, I'm doing all this for nothing. The third question was really super important too, which was, why is it absolutely vital, absolutely necessary that I do this? And here's the answer, because there's no limit. There's no deadline. There's no emergency. Sure, <laughs> for my 50th birthday, I'd love to be, you know, as beautiful as Den Denise. Of course, I'd love to look what my vision in my head is like. But if it's not the case, doesn't matter because I'm feeling better by the day. So I know that in, what is it, four months time, a bit more than this, of course, the resource I've already created will be compounded. So it is definitely, you know, vital, so necessary that I keep going. And one more thing that I want to share about what I thought yesterday was that before actually falling asleep, I realized, well, wait, what if actually it was not an issue that my weight is going up? What if actually it was a good thing? And I realized that, yes, it would make perfect sense. I know, and I guess it's right, I guess it's a fact that muscle weighs more than fat. If my weight is going up and, I be, and I'm doing all the right things, as I know I am doing, for the first time ever in my life, well, then it must mean that I'm gaining muscle. This is why my weight is increasing. And I also want to believe, I've heard this being said, and I want to believe it, that muscle burns fat. Muscle requires energy from fat stores to, um, to stay muscle. And so I'm winning, obviously. So this was what I really wanted to share, but wait, there's more. This is what I really wanted to share with you is that actually it's a good thing that maybe I'm gaining weight. Um, and also everything that I've put in place, setting me up for success. No, no question there. And also something super funny that happened today. So I told you that yesterday coping mechanism, as always, I ate more chocolate than I wanted to. And I know exactly why. And I love that I explored yesterday and this morning and got so much awareness thanks to that. So I'm completely forgiving myself. No problem there. And also the interesting is that thing is that this morning, instead of my weight going up, which I expected and kind of dreaded, to be honest, my weight went down. Fancy that. <laughs> so really the lesson... I'm learning thanks to this experience. And this is why I really wanted to share with you and with my future self, who's going to need this at some point soon, of course, is that I can trust myself. Even when I see no result whatsoever or the results I don't want to see, I mean, the scale's going up, it doesn't mean that I'm not doing the right thing. On the contrary, I can trust myself. And that's the deeper 
learning there, I can trust myself. And I wanted to, you know, make that memorable because, of course, it's the same experience with my business. Even though sometimes it feels as if, okay, I'm doing all this for nothing. I know it's not true. <laughs> I know deep in my bone that I'm gaining so much from what I'm doing. And of course, it's also helping other people. So this is my message for today. Don't give up, even if it looks as if nothing's going right. Even if it seems as if everything on the contrary is going wrong, actually, we may also be wrong about this. What if when everything is going, seems to be going wrong, it's actually when it's about to go super right, right? Because we're doing the right thing anyway. That was my message today. I'm sorry if I've been so long and I'm sorry if I speak so fast, <laughs> but I really wanted to share this with you guys and thank you so much for being here and spending time with me and i hope you're going to have an amazing saturday have a beautiful rest of your day take care bye